imagine how cool that is? There's like yes, <laughs> three thousand cows on one side, a bunch of old Model Ts, like almost getting hit by a train, a dude on a horse waving a flag at a co- oncoming train full of cow flesh. Everything it smells weird. <laughs> Hi, everybody, and welcome to 500 Open Tabs. I'm Kava Taharian. And I'm Hannah Hillam. Welcome back, Hannah. I know that you decided to take the week off to go on vacation last week, and poor Alyssa had to step up and do double duties. But you know what? She did a fantastic job. She did great. Thank you, Alyssa. Unsurprising, because she's always great. She's got it together, dude. That Look. She really does. This is nothing without Alyssa. I'm realizing every day. Uh, I knew this from the beginning, but I'm glad that you're finally catching up oh, okay. to the pro Alyssa side of I'm this finally, podcast. I'm, I'm finally on board with keeping her instead of team Alyssa. Yeah, I'll, I'll tell I'll tell human right no human rights. What's the human resources? <laughs> human rights. It's kind of like the human rights I'll tell advocacy human rights group that within Alyssa's the company. Not a human anymore. Yeah. I'll tell human resources me uh, and you that we're gonna keep her on. But yeah, I took yeah. a week off. Uh, not vacation to sign some yeah, books. Yeah, you're not vacation. I'm just yeah, I'm hassling you. <laughs> just, you're currently on your book tour. I am. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, and currently, where are we? New York. We just arrived today in New York City. No, uh, New York. City. What's that song about Delilah? Hey there, Delilah. Hey, what's it hey like there, in New Delilah. York? Hey there, Delilah. I hate that song. Yeah. It's uh, not anyway, great. we're here. Delilah's here. We don't want to talk to the guy singing the song. No. We don't care. Mm-mm. But we're Who here. Cares? For New York City Comic Con at the Javits Center Thursday through Sunday. If you're going to be in the Javits Center area for New York Comic Con, please come see us. Yeah. Tell them, Hannah, where are we going to be? We are going to be in Artist Alley at table K7. K7 and Artist Alley, just a couple of artists, okay? Couple of, K, K stands for Cave. <laughs> that's all. That's K, all. K stands for Cave. It also reminds me of uh, Pepe the Prod of like, we could be an artist alley in K Alley, okay? I don't. I don't. M- oh yeah, you don't know Muppets. Oh uh, yeah, my biggest. It could fault. be made of chocolate, okay? That's my I'm biggest I'm not doing fault. a good Pepe impression. It's okay. I mean, of which you have many, many. <laughs> Out of all of them, though, like <laughs> that's probably the most egregious. Now nah, you're good, but when it's the Muppets, yeah. yeah. When it's the Muppets, it's personal How to me. Could but I? yes, we're here, K Seven. Uh, Artist Alley uh, will be here for the whole week. Additionally, Hannah, yeah. why don't you tell them what is going on on Friday? Oh, right. Uh, (laughs) You're like, what is going on on Friday? We're going to be at the table still? I don't know. Second busiest day of the week. Uh, No, Friday, I'm going to have a book signing at 1 p.m. I think the Writest Writer, Writest, Writer's Writest Alley area. Writest Alley. Yeah. I'm a Writest in the Writer's Block area of um, the convention center. I'm not quite sure where that is, but it's going to be at uh, the Running Press slash Hashat table. So I'll be there from Running press. one to two doing book signings and saying hi and stuff. So um, so please make sure to check out Hannah's book signing. Yeah. Please make sure to come see us at the table. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, it's fun for us to go to the East Coast and see a totally different batch of people. Different. Um, very different. Very different art. Very different people. Very yeah. different vibe. I really love it. Me too. I really like New York Comic Con a lot. It's really fun to go. Agreed. Um, so... As such, for this week, we're doing um, New York-themed tabs. Oh, additionally, before yeah. before we move on, I just want to show off. I made this shirt for last year. Oh, yeah. New York sweaty. That's right. <laughs> for those of you who can't <laughs> see it on the YouTube, I'm wearing a, a shirt that I designed. Subscribe that, on YouTube. Uh, Subscribe on YouTube. Uh, it's based on the uh, shirt that, the, you know, the John Lennon shirt where he's wearing a New York City oh, yeah. shirt. But instead of city, it says sweaty. And I had to design the font to look all cool. Uh, so relatable. These shirts. New York. I, know. Dude, like- I was really excited about this one. I was like, this is going to go yeah. off the rails and everyone's going to buy it. And then I forgot to bring it you to the convention. You forgot to so. tell anyone about it. So. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm telling you guys now. It is available on blacksmithfilms.com, my website. You can go uh, get a, a, a version of the shirt and send it to you through uh, Gelato, I believe. Is the no. People who fills the order. Anyway, you can go get the shirt if you want. Uh, it's really fun. Do you make it in you black? It. Uh, no, I only do it as the white, black and white All ringer right. style tee, which, you know, we're going to see uh, by the end. It's like one of those gauges by the end of the episode. We can see how much sweat you'll start yeah. seeing around my armpits. <laughs> that's, the, that's the point. No, do it gray. Do it gray so you can really see the sweat. Really New York just sweaty. drench it in. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, yeah. Um, anyway, so we're doing New York themed uh, tabs this week in honor of us being in New York and in New York City. And since Hannah is a busy lady who's got many places to go and many signings to go, 
I'm going to let you go first. That's why. So you can probably walk away halfway through the my tab <laughs> and just be like, sorry, I got to go. I just have like like the episode where Homer works from home. I just have a little bird that like they yeah. presses a laugh button every time you say something. It would sound- Where's the any key? <laughs> Legendary <laughs> episode. Hmm, some tab sounds good right about now. <laughs> well, okay. Speaking of the Javits Center, that's kind of what my tab is sort of about, kind of. Um, so for those of you who don't know, New York City Comic Con is held in the Javits Convention Center, named after some guy named Javits. Didn't look into it, got bored. And Mr. J- Joe Javits. Mr. Reginald Javits. <laughs> Reginald Javits, and I declare that here there shall be a center made in my name. And everyone shall wear anime costumes. Uh, <laughs> I decree it. <laughs> everyone's like, what's anime? Put him in the psych ward, dude. It's like 1910. It has not yet been invented, <laughs> but I am a huge fan of the One Punch Man. <laughs> uh, yeah, they put him away. They Reginald away. Javits. Reginald. Why is he British? <laughs> it's just fun to do that stupid Reginald. voice. Reginald. Uh, Reginald Javits. <laughs> well, whoever he was, they named a convention yeah. center after him, and that's where they have a bunch of conventions. So... It is uh, in the neighborhood of Hell's Kitchen, which favorite name of any neighborhood on earth. Hell's Kitchen is great. It's also the home of Matt Murdock, the uh, the Daredevil. Oh, the the, Daredevil, uh, the superhero? The superhero. Yeah. Well, that works really well because this is about Comic-Con, so I'm glad you- Is it about a Daredevil? I thought no. you were going to say it's about Daredevil. No, this has very few humans <laughs> in this tab. <laughs> okay, uh, I already love it. Yeah, so we'll be- <laughs> West Side of Manhattan. We'll see if you love it. Yes, we'll yes, yes. West you side. might. Just at least pretend, you know, like you usually do. No humans were oh, harmed yeah. in the filming of this tab because there's no humans. Oh, there's multiple. It. There's many deaths of humans in this tab. Oh, okay. <laughs> but none Loving of them it. named. <laughs> Who needs to do that? Uh, so it's located in Hell's Kitchen neighborhood of the West Side of Manhattan. And mm-hmm. the c- convention center is actually like when they built it, they ended up doing it massive. Like it takes up like four city blocks. So like 34th yeah, Street to 39th Street. And it's on 11th Avenue, which if you go over one more avenue to 12th Avenue, you're like right at the, the waterfront and uh, looking yep. out, you can see New Jersey, you can see the Hudson River. And I realize I just like don't know much about the side of the city. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. spent a lot of time other places, had my internship in Brooklyn. And Were you were you working as an influencer for, were you interning at an influencing company? Yes. I yeah, was. You were like, actually, I was in a, I was influencing for a company that takes uh, designer ties and then repurposes them as belts for the homeless. <laughs> and we were <laughs> we we're making short form documentaries about it to yeah. put on TikTok to raise awareness. So of course I'm like, what happened at the Javits? What what's the Javits Center? And I do this all mm-hmm. the time where I'm like, that's an interesting building. Let's go look it up. And I went and read about the yeah. Javits Center and it was so boring. It was yeah. so boring, dude. I was like Reginald could not hold your interest dude, at all. Reginald <laughs> There was like bidding wars on the property and hey, we're going to build this, we're going to build that. And so I was like, can't deal with this. There's too many numbers. There's too much words I don't care about, you know? So I closed mm-hmm. yeah. that tab because who needs it, you know? Um, Look at that. The Javits Center helping us achieve our goal of closing 500 tabs. Yes. It's doing Excellent. something, right? Thanks, Javits. Thanks, Reginald. <laughs> Reginald, we thank you. His ghost is like, uh, what's the Javits Center? Anyway, yeah. um, so I wanted to see what else was around there because I was like, what even happens okay. over here? So I head over to Atlas Obscura, one of my favorite little mm-hmm. like, yeah, yeah, yeah. fun info sites. And I, <laughs> I look at the map on the west side in Hell's Kitchen. And I, the first thing I notice is an article titled West Side Cow Tunnels, New York City's Legendary Underground. Sorry, what? Ca- <laughs> <laughs> west Side Cow Tunnels. Oh, okay. That's exactly this what This is it like a shout like. out to our mozzarella tunnels, our first yeah. episode. Oh, hobby tunnelers, but they're cows. But they're cows and they're making mozzarella as they tunnel. Yeah, because the, in their udders, that's what they do, right? They mix up that they, milk they, and Mozzarella just comes out. Just yeah, you got to get a very special mozzarella. breed of cow. It's the mozzarella cow. It's the mozzarella bovine. Yes. <laughs> yep. And if it comes, if you get the wrong cow, you're just going to get straight up milk and no one wants that. Yeah, you don't want that. That's but when they're younger is mm-hmm. when you can get the ricotta cow. Oh. But otherwise, when they go into adulthood, that's when they become yeah. full mozzarella. mozzarella. So you got to make sure, yeah, you know what age the cow is. I don't want any the wrong watered cheese. down mozzarella. So take good care of those cows. No, I don't know what exactly. I'm talking about at this point. <laughs> it's science, okay? Yeah. It's backed by science. Look it up. Yeah. <laughs> Push a cow through a tunnel, mozzarella. Anyway, okay, hang on. The article. <laughs> What have you done to me? 
the article, West Side Cow Tunnels, New York City's legendary underground network for bovine transportation. <laughs> so please tell me the cows are the ones who dug the tunnels. <laughs> well, we don't even know if these tunnels exist. And that's what Ooh, I'm going to talk about today. I see. So I'm going to talk about these alleged cow tunnels, but also the, the insane paths I went to like find out more about them. Because I insane tunnels that you oh, went down. I went down so many rabbit holes and into tunnels, and so it's less of like one article, one tab. It's more like mm-hmm. a ton, like a big umbrella, like multiverse of tabs that all have one thing in common, and that is cows and the West Side of okay. New York. So let's get going, right? All right, let's do it. West Side of Manhattan has always been a place of like crap happening at the shore, at the seashore. You know what I mean, like. The People are selling seashells, seashells by the seashore. They're fishing. They're throwing rocks out and thinking about stuff. They're getting on boats. You know, all Probably. the things they do with the the seashore. Yeah, that's it. Only those four things. Those are four things. At the ocean. Mm-hmm. Anything else? It's not happening. No yet. sharks. It's happening. <laughs> <laughs> There's probably sharks. <laughs> There's whales. There are. There's yeah. exploding whales. They're exactly. Back. Anyway, this all began before even Europeans came so the inha- the original inhabitants were the lenape uh native american tribe and the name manhattan actually comes from the lenape language and it means the, the place where we get wood for bows and it was because it <laughs> okay. was a big forest of hickory trees and they're good for bows so i really like that though i uh, like that how how specific it yes, is where it's like oh we're gonna go to the place where we make bows that's all you need to know and now it's like the financial capital of the world but like 600 years bows, ago, extremely valuable. They were just apparently. cutting down some trees for bows. Well, That's awesome. Yeah. It wasn't even a place they like fully lived, but they had a bunch of like, you know, fishing and whatever, whatever. Uh, it's crazy to think of New York as a place where there was a shit ton of trees that people so would go many to, trees. To like, yeah, a ton. Like if you look at Central Park, you can still see kind of a little bit of. Yeah. yeah. Like those certain but just areas. The whole island yeah. being that way is, is unfathomable to me. Yep. And then well, the, the, the Dutch came and the Dutch were like. Doing what the Dutch gonna, do best. We're going to Dutch oven everybody here. Which is start lots of like uh, trading companies that exploit everybody. You know, whatever. All of mm. that. Spices. They Thanks, all went guys. nuts. There's always that, that's that story that's like, was New York traded for some nutmeg? Have you ever heard of that? Oh, no, I have not heard of that. And that's all I remember from it. So you're going to have to look that okay. up. Okay. Somebody else can go look it up. Maybe the, that's another tab. The Dutch sold New York for some spices or something to the British. Mm. The British came. Then New York rapidly began to grow. Yay. Woo, <laughs> British. Woo. Tunnels, uh, Native Americans under a city. This is like a repeat of our uh, of my LA lizard people story. This is like the East Coast version of it. Except this is way more. Except this one's populated by cow people, not by (laughs) lizard people. Again, I'm just jumping ahead. I have no idea. Well, we'll see. But I'd like to think there was a scenario in which there were cow people on the East Coast and lizard people on the West Coast, and they all saw the same meteor shower. Yeah, they all dug tunnels underneath. And they met in the middle in Kansas. Yeah. Or oh, maybe they in the middle and they kissed. They kissed. <gasps> they kissed. And then somewhere there's lizard cow people living in the center of the earth. Oh. <gasps> making love and just All having day. a good time. Just, yeah. just, that sounds wow. How, horrific. How's that for fan fiction? That's... I just shipped two of our own tabs together. <laughs> <laughs> And Can that, I... ladies and gentlemen, is how it's done. Well, that's the show. <laughs> yeah. Bye. They better put me in a rightist's alley now <laughs> after that. That's your one-way ticket to rightist alley. <laughs> <laughs> this gonna this look, we got table energy right now. We do. Okay, I'm sorry, I've derailed you. <laughs> I know, okay, I so like it. There's uh where you get your arrows as is, is what uh is what Manhattan Manhattan's means. called, right? The Manhattan place you is, go to yeah. get the wood for bows. And uh place, yeah, wood for bows, oh, sorry, not arrows, yes. And okay, then continue. all the Europeans came and then it's just like kinda always been this industrial area since. Like mm-hmm. and by industri- industry I mean like farming and shipping and stuff like that. Not necessarily like smoke and tower, you know, big buildings. Oh, right, right, yeah. Meat packing, shipping, manufacturing, like the garment district is nearby. Yeah, garment district's there too. Yeah, meat packing. And I mean and these were like all uh, worked by like very poor Irish people who mm-hmm. were coming from the famine. Yeah, mostly immigrants. Yeah. yeah, which by the way, the famine was started and kept going by the English. <laughs> yes, it was. It was not um, an accident. Yeah, no. There was another meme that I saw that was like an article about the English. They're like, "Oh, this rare was the potato famine caused by like this weird specific like bug," and then yeah. they had like the <laughs> the uh, scientific name for it, and then someone just wrote, "That's a weird name for English people." <laughs> That's beautiful, and it's so yeah. true. 
<laughs> that was a a, a, a very sp- specific way of um, it's a it's terrorizing, terrorizing an entire nation, yeah, mass murder, yeah, yeah. exactly, uh, genocidal, genociding <laughs> mm-hmm. an entire country. Um, so a lot of these Irish immigrants were like, we have literally nothing. Where can we work? Oh, this horrible factory that where yeah. I have to like cut meat to pieces and get covered Sport in blood. Bastards. Oh, yeah. anyway, so there's always been meat there, right? Where mm-hmm. does the meat come from? Cows. So oh, <laughs> that brings us. You know, I never thought of that. I'm like, yeah, why is it the meat packing in the district? Oh, that's I'm funny. about yeah, okay. to tell you, dude. It is gross. Interesting. I love it. I'm leaning in. So this is like some new. Don't uh, lean in too far. <laughs> you're going to fall into one of the vats and become part of the beef. Are you the new Upton Sinclair of podcasting? I might be. <laughs> oh, interesting. Yes. Tell uh, us more about this, the jungle. <laughs> the jungle, 110, 20 years ago. That's going to make some changes. <laughs> Uh, so it's funny because I am a vegetarian. Uh, That's true. You are vegetarian. Reading about this was gross. <laughs> like, I think I texted you last night. I'm like, I'm doing a gross tab, and then later you did tell me that. Yeah, I realized it's probably only gross to like me. <laughs> and I think you'll I, be fine. I, I don't know. I feel like we're all uh, pretty detached from this shit, which I think is really. I'm going to get into that too. Okay, good. Let's hear it. So legend has it that in the 1870s, yeah. New York was so filled with cows. That they had to build an underground tunnel near where the Javits Center is, from the dock to the holding pens before they took them to the abattoirs. They when to one the article, abattoirs, ab- like they had, like they yeah, put on the, the thing, they went into, they yeah. came out as giant blue, like cow thirty lizards. foot tall yeah. cows. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. This is the fan and fiction. This is where they meet. They, they look like the kids from Avatar, the people from Avatar, the aliens. And they yeah. kiss. They're like the Navi. <laughs> We're back and to the kiss. kissing <laughs> with their tails. <laughs> the cow lizard kissing. <laughs> well, oh, someone draw that, but don't show me. I don't want to see it. Navi's. Navi's. What would the Navi name be? Like the cow Navi. What is that going to be called? I Clizzard. bet you James Cameron's already working on this right now. Did you say Clizzard? Cow Lizard. Clizzard. Bow Vizard? This doesn't matter. Oh my God, we're derailing. <laughs> look, look. It's it, it, what's it with the theme? You can assure, as you're listening to this, just know we're doing the same thing at the table right now. That's true. Okay? This is 100% Being how it's going insane. at the convention. <laughs> Well, clizzard people. Uh, <laughs> anyway, so there was there, so much cow. There were so many cows that there was one person who described it as a uh, cow jam, as in like a traffic cow jam. Cow jam? <laughs> traffic jam. Oh, like a traffic jam. Yeah. I see. I uh, thought they were making jam out of beef, and I was like, that doesn't sound <laughs> good at all. Actually, <laughs> I think they do that in England or Australia. They literally just make like a meat paste. Like, Ew. <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to try the meat paste, but continue. Mm-hmm. Sorry. Cow Jam. Cow Jam. Man, their so... first record was so good with Jeremy and all that. But once they, <laughs> after a couple of years. <laughs> You're talking get... about Squirrel Jam, dude. That's not Cow Jam. <laughs> Do you even know their top five songs? Okay. We have yeah. got. Oh, wow. You're wearing a Cow Jam t shirt. <laughs> Did you even go to their you concert? <laughs> mur, 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 mur. Moo, 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 moo. <laughs> I, can't, I can't look at you. Wow, okay. you sound like... Anyway, continue. Yeah, I'm going to derail this. Keep going. There's so many cows in the street. Here, picture this, okay? You're like an Irish immigrant that just watched his whole family die in the famine. And you've just gotten off a boat. And you're like, I need somewhere to live. Oh, my God. Yeah, that's really upsetting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or it might just be like America is the land of opportunity. There's just cows on the streets. Well... That's the thing. You get there and you're like, I'm going to work in the meatpacking industry. I'm in paradise. And But you can't even get there because there's too many cows in the street. And so you have to like dodge and weave and find your way around these gigantic herds of cows that are being led from to and from slaughterhouses from the docks. <laughs> so, by the way, this is all happening right where the Javits Center is. Okay? Mm, Und- man. Under the Javits Center. All these, all these kids dressed up as anime characters <laughs> just can't get through. All the anime characters going to the slaughterhouses are just getting in the way of everybody. <laughs> I love cosplay. Okay, so, so yeah, you're right. You can't even get through. There's so many cows. And uh, at the time, the main area of meat slaughtering was in this area right next to the, uh, where the Javits Center is now. So they'd bring the cows from New Jersey on barges across the Hudson. And then... Couldn't even have their own New Yorker cows. They'd import right, them from Jersey. Jersey. Psh. Wow. Classic. Classic New York. Cutting corners. Cutting corners. You know, just crapping all over Jersey. Okay. So they get off on the docks on 12th Avenue and they lead them okay. across to 11th 
and then put mm-hmm. them in a holding pen and put them in different pens depending on which slaughterhouse is going to have them because there are 40 or more, more than 40 slaughterhouses nearby. So this entire... Really <laughs> is that is Javits Center on the giant pen? Is that where the giant pen was? Yes. Is Javits Center... Whoa! <laughs> yes, dude. This whole... No, everything I'm telling you about happened where the Javits Center is right now. We're literally selling yes. like drawings and comics where cows used to be held before they got slaughtered. <gasps> what an appropriately beautiful metaphor. And... <laughs> Kind of, yeah. <laughs> a little bit. Look. <laughs> We're all going to die someday. <laughs> but just know that the ground you walk on is soaked in Covered cow blood. In blood. That's awesome. And I, mean, I mean that literally. Because when yeah. you're slaughtering cows in a small area in a city, you have to find somewhere to put the blood. And a lot of times, oh, yeah. it just went into the street, which is disgusting and so there'd be like cow and that wasn't for very long because they were like we can't put blood in the street so i'm sorry i'm getting ahead of myself so they're all in these pens and then from there they are taken to the slaughterhouses and they're cut up and killed first they're killed (laughs) they're killed they're drained they're cut up alive yeah they're drained killed drained cut up and after a while they started putting in like pipes underground to take to take the blood away (laughs) so they would dump these this blood (laughs) Into an underground like special cow yes. blood plumbing. There was, there was Weird. special plumbing for viscera and blood for under the slaughterhouses. There Why are, do I think that that's awesome? It is I feel amazing. like I shouldn't think that that's awesome, no. but it's awesome. Blood tunnels. <laughs> yeah, you can't just dump blood in the street. It's like blood pipes. Yeah, it's like a blood pipes. It's like New York City has its own <laughs> blood vessels of cow blood, <laughs> and it's going to become sentient yes. and just like get up out of the water, just be like Rawr. like the MacArthur maze. It's gonna, yeah, it's gonna fight JFK, <gasps> the president. Ooh, that's a good. That's a good Kumatab. I know. <laughs> Kumatab is like the island of Manhattan filled with cow blood, fighting the and MacArthur. And it's wielding maids. a bow made of hickory. <laughs> <laughs> mm. In ten episodes, we're gonna have the Kumatab episode. So, continue, continue. I'm whatever. Excited. So there's a bunch of pipes for cows, and and, and like there's whole areas where you go just go dump lard and offal, which is like bone gunk. And, and so this entire area smelled horrible. I can imagine how Listen, bad it would smell. These people could have gotten so many stews going, and they didn't. <laughs> Carl Weathers would have been pissed. <laughs> <get a> stew. <laughs> Just throwing all this bone out. <laughs> got a nice stew <laughs> Put going. that in a pot. You get a stew going. <laughs> the way he's so eager when he says it is so good. <laughs> Just a couple of adults getting our stew on. <laughs> I'm making my brother-in-law re-watch, or watch that for the first R. time. R.I.P. Oh, my God. I miss Carl Weathers. He's so I love funny. That guy. He's so great. I remember watching that, my mom being like, is that Carl Weathers? <laughs> like, yes, it is. <laughs> and her just being very confused. <laughs> like, Absolute legend. Anyway, yes, you can so imagine, the, yeah. the city grows rapidly, and this becomes a logistical nightmare, <laughs> and especially after the railroad came to town. The Uh-oh. New York, because around the, like, the 1880s, 1890s, the railroad shows up, and they want to make mm. it easier to ship this meat somewhere else in the city and so they they bring new york central railways built a street level track running along 10th and 11th avenues so right in front of the javits center yeah where the so they can easily bring what they need uh and even bring you know things to other factor or to other slaughterhouses but i gotta remind you because um these these tracks were street level okay and there are carriages okay. there are people and there oh, are oh no everyone's just getting hit and getting killed so many right. deaths like 600 oh, no. people died. Oh, my God. Six, 600 people. Someone's just looking at their phone. They're texting. Yeah. They don't even look up to see that there's a train filled with cow flesh and blood <laughs> spilling everywhere coming directly at them. The cow train's they coming. They decapitated. Yeah. Oh, seriously. And then, so here's the city's uh, solution to that was like, oh, we well, just need to have somebody to warn everyone that the train's coming. And so they- I mean, have... that's, a, that's a reasonable thing to start. Did that person get killed? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no probably uh, because it didn't work so they hired these people they ended up calling them um, sorry i can't stop laughing yeah i knew everyone's like we gotta stop these deaths and and so they send in these people they called the west side cowboys which is an awesome name oh my god i want a shirt that says <laughs> yes! west side cowboys and it's just, and cow it's just blood <laughs> It's just a dude oh misdirecting a train. That's why New York is the best city yeah. in the world, because they have the West Side Cowboys. Yeah. So these guys, they would actually cut, have these guys come in from the West, like from the West. It was I'm a, not going to be okay. No, I love this. This, this is the greatest is thing so ever. so good. 
I told you, I went on, I was like, I have been ensconced in cow blood. <laughs> in side cowboys. Yeah, so the <laughs> West Side Cowboys were these literal cowboys. They weren't literally, but they were like, they were on horseback and they had flags and they would signal to the trains to slow down. <laughs> You're going to die, dude. <laughs> so excited. Uh, and just imagine how cool that is. There's like yes! <laughs> 3,000 cows on one side, a bunch of old Model Ts, like almost getting hit by a train a dude on a horse waving a flag at a co- oncoming train full of cow flesh like a bunch of sad irish people awful everything s- smells weird i think that's the only place that's the only thing i couldn't handle is the bad smell me too oh anyway that didn't help that's at all awesome. uh mm-hmm. because trains can't slow down that fast and that's true. uh people just kept driving their cars and over the train tracks and being stupid because it was it became known as the most congested area of the entire city because of the cows. Mm. So right, right. finally they decided to raise the railroad. And this wasn't until like 30 years later after 30 <laughs> years of just deaths and they're like, eh, "West Side Cowboys." That's just part of a it's just like a loss every year. We're just going to have to count on like <laughs> well, a couple hundred people getting killed. How many Irish killed. have we lost this yeah. year? Oh. Oh, sad, but true. It's, sad. it's yeah. the less dead or whatever they call it. So they started doing this thing called the West Side Improvement Project, which might sound familiar because there's another one of those happening currently. Mm. The Hud- oh, is it really? The Hudson Docks. The Hudson, okay, the yes, Hudson yes, Yard yes. is doing a- Hudson Yard, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so if it gives you any idea, the West Side has always been kind of, it's just the weird, like, what do we do over here? How do we make it better? Why is there so much blood in the street? <laughs> is it human or is it cow? <laughs> we don't or clizzard. We don't know. Clizzard, yeah. The and claw v. They built the they built the West Side Elevated Highway. And the right. la, and the last street level train track was finally removed in the 40s. And so then it was all oh, okay. le- raised up and the trains were able to stop cuz uh stop at each of the buildings all along the mm-hmm. way. And you can still go to this place because it is now the High Line. Yeah, yeah, that was gonna yeah. say that's right where the High Line is. Yep. So if you, if which is you, very different. That's very, interesting. I yeah. didn't realize that that's what it was. Yeah, that that's uh, so cool. It was built because people just kept getting hit by trains <laughs> because there were too many cows on the street. So the High Line, you can still walk it today, and if you walk it, you can see the buildings are right up next to it, and that was on purpose mm-hmm. because the trains would stop at these loading platforms and areas oh, to just, and they just dump them out, load things straight into the tra- into the buildings, which worked really great, and everyone down below was able to just move their cows around the city without getting hit by trains and uh <laughs> i imagine too underneath it it's just raining blood because they're all <laughs> dripping down from the cows I, i'm dude i'm picturing a backdrop of only blood this whole story so is so much blood because do cows are big and they have a ton of blood have you ever watched a cow get drained um not really no i haven't no me neither I'm, i've watched I've a seen chicken. like oh uh, yeah but no lots lots of blood lots yeah. of blood yeah and cows are huge like you Massive. said they're not small yeah they have like four hearts or whatever anyway yeah so uh, the very last shipment, so they used this railroad up until the 80s, right before the Javits Center was built. And the very last shipment of the train car was full of frozen turkeys. So it's always been meat. Oh, interesting. And the tie line is so popular now that it has actually been called a tourist clogged cattle chute <laughs> uh, recently. So the cows never go away. So back to the cow tunnels. Cow tunnels, right. So writer and food blogger and podcaster uh, Nicola mm-hmm. Twilly, uh, who describes herself as a shy kid who liked writing but not interacting, uh, mm-hmm. which I love and respect, uh, first yeah. heard the legend of the 12th Street Cow Tunnels in a book about the meat industry because she got really into learning about food and how it's made and where it comes from and started blogging about it. And this book, uh, I didn't write the name of it down, but it's by uh, somebody named Betsy Fussell. Um, Betsy Fussell. Oh, it's called Raising Steaks. And uh, Raising she kind of got... I like that. It's a good name. It is a good name, right? She got hi- kind of hyper fixated on this one passage of the book that talks about the cow tunnels. And she was like, well, are they still there? Because at this point, the Javits Center had been built. The yeah. uh, lot. What's the tunnel that goes... Oh, the tunnel that goes under the Hudson? It's the one that goes to Jersey. Yeah, it, just, it has a name. Yeah, Hudson Square in Lower Manhattan Lincoln, East Jersey. Lincoln Tunnel. That's just, it's not the one I was thinking of. It's a different tunnel, but it's not the one that goes okay. under the water. Oh, I see. Okay. <clears throat> so the Lincoln Tunnel had been built and she was like, it kind of got obsessed with this, which, oh, I love her. It's one Relate- of us. <laughs> Relatable. Yeah. Uh, and she kind of started going on this crazy quest to figure out where these tunnels were. 
and if they even existed. And so she researched a ton, found nothing except for one article from 1997 from this mm-hmm. dude who was doing the same thing where he was like, where are these tunnels? Did they kiss? They, oh, my gosh. I, we should ask. There needs to be a love story in this somewhere, Hannah. That's why, all I'm thinking right now. Why are we right both now. want everyone to kiss right now? I mean, I, I do. I just I want it. No, you know what it is? It's like whenever I think of tunnel, it's like you're you're digging a tunnel to someone else's heart. It's always trying to connect heart. two things. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Brian. Or, or escaping from you know slavery or something. Oh, I mean, right. It's also terrible. But, and or like hiding uh, from bombs and stuff. Tunnel, tunnels are weirdly, weirdly liberating. They, they can be. You know, I think like at the end of the day, it's like it's this act of self-determination of like trying to f- access something better. And you're yes. willing to like dig to into the world to do it. it. Yeah. So even though the the idea of the escape is sad, the idea is that at the end of that tunnel is it's some sort freedom. of liberation. It's yeah. freedom. I and think it's that's like, like a, a very yeah, the self determination and like um, choosing your own way and yeah, taking things creating into your, your own, own destiny hands. kind of yeah. thing. Yeah, no matter what. And like there is a sort of there's always light at the end of the tunnel, if you will. Yes, sticking or destiny into your own hoofs. In this yes. case, into your own hoofs. <laughs> so stupid. <laughs> We're so getting fired today. So dumb. Everyone From hates what us. the Javits Center? Yeah. <laughs> I've exposed. I'm, I'm exposing the graveyard of cows they're sat on top of. All right? That's going to be the uh, the YouTube title. It'll be like Javit Center exposed <laughs> as cow graveyard, you know, <laughs> vegan like anti vegan death <laughs> ground of cow blood. We'll get so many clicks. Yeah, dude, do it. What's under the Javit Center? Yeah, blood. And it just has cow blood, blood dripping. Genius. YouTube is oh, it's all bad. Um, go follow us on YouTube. Yeah, so, go subscribe to our YouTube channel, please. So she gets into this article by this guy named Brian Whipper, Whiprid. So Br- Whiprid? Whiprid, I think. Whiprid, Whiprid? okay. Whiprid. Brian is a fascinating person. I would love okay. to meet him in real life. He writes crime novels and thrillers like okay. as a job, but then on the side is a utility specialist for Con Edison. Because he has this very specific skill of knowing what's under every area of New York. Okay. So he, having worked at this job and his expertise has made it so that he he has had to figure out for Con Edison how to make one, how to take a, a new cable from one point A to point B and to okay. know where to put it and which level. Because the city is like levels of cables and, and tunnels. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. You have to be super careful or else you're going to have a huge yep. problem. And yeah. so he's really good at knowing. And so they they hire him to do that. And he had started hearing all these like cow tunnel, you know, there's a cow tunnel. And he's like, what? And so he started doing the same kind of thing, asking all of his Con Edison employees or uh, co-workers, like, have you heard of this? Mm-hmm. And he finds one co-worker who's like, oh, I know where it is. And they're like, shut up. Stop asking about <laughs> it. Shh. They'll hear they're you. Like, the if cows. I was you, I'd turn around right now and I'd go back home <laughs> and forget this ever happened. That you never heard nothing about no cow tunnels. <laughs> As he's eating fresh cow mozzarella. Right. From no, the as he's walking tea. home, he keeps seeing a cow across. He's like looking in the crowd of <laughs> yes. people and then there's he thinks cow. he sees a cow. <laughs> and then he's like, what? And he rubs his eyes and then there's and then the cow is gone. And the and cow's gone. Like, I'm seeing cows everywhere. I don't know. I think they're stalking me. And they're like, hey, buddy, I think you need to take it easy. You need to calm down a little bit. I think you're losing your mind a little bit. And he's like, no one will believe me. There's a cow conspiracy. Sorry, I'm thinking a lot about movie trailers right now. I, I really why. like that, dude. I like that so much. You used all the trucks. And there's a cow smoking a cigarette in at the, the end shade, of the street. In, the, in like an alleyway. Yeah. So, so be like, like you yeah. You, I heard you talk about the tunnel. Yeah. Here's your full name and address. Be like, I know you. You know why I'm here. Because you know about the cow tunnels. <laughs> Let me take you somewhere. And then he. Let me take you. Yeah. And then he goes. And there's the Javits Center. And, and then he, he goes sees to Comic-Con. And, like, and he cool. sees us. And he goes to Comic-Con. <laughs> and he comes to Table K7. Yeah. And he purchases all of our art and yes. books. Brian. The end. I'll write. I'll draw you a picture of a cow. We'll draw cows for in you, Brian. Tunnel. If you're at New York Comic Con in a tunnel. The thing is, he could be. That's the thing. I was reading about him. I'm like, this guy could easily, literally, do anything. Seems like our people. Jack yeah, of all. Seems like he would be into this. Things. Anyway, so he, one of his uh, coworkers at the Con Edison is named Fred. That's the only name he gives him. And Fred's like, yeah. oh, come here. And he shows him <laughs> this tunnel he found, but it's not even near the meatpacking industry. Nothing like. Nowhere near it, and and okay. he was like, "I was digging." And he told him this story. I already love Fred. So Fred was like, oh, here's, <laughs> "I was here's, digging." Here's my tunnel story. He's like, "I was yeah. digging in that. We were digging for a new thing, and we found this tunnel. And a neighbor guy came out and said, 
why I see you found the cow tunnel. <laughs> it really is like every Hollywood movie yes. cliche. Uh, and the neighbor, the old neighbor man was wrong because it was not the cow tunnel. It was nowhere near where it needed to be. But Fred was like, that's the closest I've come. And and Brian was like, oh, and that's kind of all he did. He just kind of asked around. It was all hearsay mm-hmm. and legend and myth. And it seemed that way. And it discouraging a lot of people until, until. 2013 yeah. when Nicola Twilley, the writer, the food writer, found proof that there was probably a tunnel made for cows under Did the he Javits have Center. An x-ray machine as well? What was it called? Oh, oh. the uh, x-ray <laughs> microwave or whatever. Microwave. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Nicola. I should know this. It's my own tab. Yeah, I what? forgot what it was. Brain bad. Gone. He's like, oh, all you got to do is you got to change it from the lizard setting on the microwave <laughs> to the cow to the setting. Cow setting. <laughs> or put it right between them for the lizard. I'm yeah, never going to stop saying lizard. <laughs> <laughs> so Nicola discovers this plan that is, that is referencing a former plan about the tunnels. So 1991, okay. somebody had compiled a bunch of like things uh, about like what was underneath the Javits Center so they could know. And one of them was this old blueprint from like the 1910s that was a a beautiful blueprint of like an actual like tunnel made for cows and the logistics of it and how it would look and where it would be and it had like an entrance and an exit and here's the problem though they don't know if it actually got built right so nicola dove into these blueprints and descriptions uh, and descriptions of them and stuff and she got ended up getting into the digital archive of sanborn maps have you heard of sanborn maps no, I have been. I don't even know what that is. Down the Sanborn Hall, and I would go there again. That's so Dune of you. <laughs> yeah, there was nothing down. <laughs> Sanborn maps were originally created for fire insurance risk maps for like insurance agents. Fire insurance risk maps, so like places where fire would be likely. Yeah, and so, so the insurance can figure out where to charge and up, yes, upcharge you if you're in a higher risk of fire. Yep. I didn't mean to be rapping like that but you know what that was you a just good, call me a west good. side cowboy now that's <laughs> you're, how i'm you're west that's side how I'm cowboy <laughs> <laughs> that's gonna be my rap my hip-hop name my mc name pretty soon west side cowboy west side cowboy yeah. i want you to make a shirt with that <laughs> west side cowboys might actually happen and now. it needs to i've already done new like york sweaty a shank of beef is bleeding out <laughs> i don't know or a white flag this is west side cowboy anyway we can talk about west this side. later so she starts getting these maps and knowing the Sanborn maps. I love the Sanborn maps because these were kind of okay. like an accidental, like like they were created for insurance agents, but they're now some of the best and most detailed property maps we have. And they're in every city in the U.S. So you can find one and you can find where water is hooked up on any any land. We can, You can find where... Um, that makes sense, yeah. Yeah, it's it's all there. Like We did it for my friend's house. He bought this really old house and I, well, he wanted to figure out where the water was. And so I looked up at the Sanborn map. We found it. So all the Sanborn maps of that time, there was no tunnel. There was nothing. There was no tunnel listed. And it would have been. So that got her kind of feeling down. And then she found this other description in there somewhere that says, livestock continued to be shipped to Manhattan for slaughter through the 20th century. The Pennsylvania Railroad was active in transporting livestock via rail to Jersey City and then to Hudson to Manhattan, across the Hudson to Manhattan. The company served a set of slaughterhouses Located on, you know, uh, Mm -hmm. sometime between 1928 and 1930, a two-story concrete cattle pen was built at the southeastern intersection of 39th and 12th. In addition, a tunnel was built by the railroad in 1932 to allow cows to be driven under instead of across 12th Avenue Mm. at West 38th Street. So, yeah. So eat shit, Elon Musk. Yeah. This is a cow tunnel, much better than your stupid idiot Tesla tunnel so, that no one liked or used. No, he didn't even do anything. He, he didn't never even did make that. His, like, no. So no one really knows if it's been built, but there is documentation of a plan and a description of executing the plan. So likely... <laughs> what was the the thing from the from the debate the other night? I didn't watch it. I have concepts of a plan. Oh, yeah, concepts of a plan. About it. Yeah, yeah, this was concepts of a plan. And it goes on to say, no archaeology has been done there, which is good because that means we haven't looked at it yet. That means Indiana Jones has not yet Uh been able to find some ancient relic. Cow tunnel. And no members of our staff have any documentation of the tunnels. So we don't know, but I'd like to believe that there is a tunnel 
for cows to go to slaughter. Under our feet, right now at the Javits Center. I believe in it, and I hope that I could be led through a tunnel to slaughter something. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna throw out an alternative scenario okay. based on what we were saying earlier. There is a tunnel going from slaughterhouses out, so people, so cows can escape being slaughtered. There it is. There's the movie. That's that's the hopeful interpretation. It's like the underground cow tunnel yeah. to escape slaughter and then slip amongst the population of the people yeah. in New York City. And that's why that guy kept seeing found. cows popping up. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's a good movie. Yeah. Uh, but Nicola is still actively researching this. So you can go to her blog. And she the last one she did was in 2013, I think. But she has multiple entries. It's called Edi- And then what happened to her from 2013? She <laughs> the went cows missing. got her. Yeah. Uh, ediblegeography.com is Nicola's blog. And she, it's a cool name. It's really cool. So she she's really involved in like this kind of stuff, like researching f- food-centric. And Listen, so- Just going to put this out there. It would be a cool guest. I mm-hmm. maybe we should reach out to her and we see should. if she's interested in she's being on a mid podcast. Active on Twitter and stuff. Whether or not it was built was a different question. One person says, "If remnants of the tunnel still exists, they may have been they may have disappeared beneath the Javits Center or destroyed when Lincoln Tunnel was built." So, mm, okay. So I that's the weird urban myth of the cow tunnels, and there is plans. There were plans made for that. We just don't know if they were ever built. I absolutely love this and it makes me I'm just like I'm gonna go find like X marks the spot in the Javits Center yes and then hit it <laughs> and then try and go underneath and then get arrested <laughs> yeah yeah why did it have to be rats <laughs> is that from something it's Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade oh, but he doesn't say why did it have to be I rats haven't but seen they go it. underneath the library yeah I know that with, part with Elsa yeah it's great I should watch um, that uh, that's that, yeah I mean that's Cow literally tunnels. what's playing in my head so next that, time you're walking around down by the Hudson Yards, just picture blood in the streets. I'm going to be obsessed with this when we're there, by the way. I this know. is going to be amazing. We're going to have, what did you say, 39th and 12th is where they thought. Yeah, you know the corner we Listen, met on? We met? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. where well, they- not the, the one that we met originally, but we would meet the corner, before we go in. The corner I got picked up from. No, the yeah, corner. Yeah, I was going to say, that sounds like you're a pros- one of us is a prostitute. And you're like, that's <laughs> where we you. met for the first time. <laughs> it's true. We were both prostitutes. Yeah. <laughs> there it is. Wait, we can go bring uh, dowsing rods and yeah. be like, f- help us find the, the giant tunnel. blood tunnels. Yeah. So Nicola, if you're listening to this, I would love to talk to you about this. Uh, and I found an article that she had written for Gizmodo that I'm going to link. It's such a good article. Oh, nice. And I found awesome. it right before I started recording this. So if you want to know more, uh, I'll link it. But yeah, okay. there it is. Awesome. 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 I absolutely love that. That was fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. That was a great one. I again, uh, I, I don't think I'm going to be able to like focus on anything. <laughs> Take a minute. At the Javits Center. No, oh, no, I'm oh. saying when we're there, oh, I'm I know. Just, all I'm going to be thinking about is just like I want to go stand on the gonna... spot where they where they shipped all those cows out. No, all I want is to like every time I get into an elevator at Javits, I'm going to like push the button, and then when the doors open, I'm just going to assume that like cow blood is going to be pouring <laughs> out like in the shining. Like the shining. There's, <laughs> there's two cows wearing blue dresses yeah. staring at you. This is really cool. There's a it's cow really giving another cow blowjob. Yeah. <laughs> is the, isn't there that scene? Yeah. But the other cow's dressed up in a whatever. Beautiful. Clizzard. In a human outfit. Cl- <laughs> Clizzard. Yeah. Clizzard, Navi. They kissed in the middle of the country when they built out their t- That was a weird tab. We, went, Dude, we had some weird places we with that one. We had table energy today. We did. We did. Excellent. Excellent. Right. I, really, I really did enjoy that. That one was great. Thanks. What do you have for me today? Okay, so, so my awkward. tab. What do you have for me today? What do you got for me today? What, you what got? pretend tab do you have that's not as good as mine? Whatever. So my article, or sorry, mine starts with an article. The headline made me laugh really hard, <laughs> and it's from The Guardian back in 2016. No. Oh. And it's titled, New York Monument Honors Victims of Giant Octopus Attack That Never Occurred. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Is it clickbait? I don't want it to be clickbait. It's not. Oh, okay, good. Yes. Okay, so <clears throat> this is an excerpt from it. It says, A cast bronze monument for the victims of the sinking of a steam ferry recently appeared in Battery Park at the southern tip of Manhattan, near other somber memorials to soldiers, sailors, and mariners lost at sea or in the battlefield. There was, however, no such ferry disaster. 
The 250-pound monument, which depicts the Staten Island Ferry, the Cornelius G. Kolf, being dragged under the waves by a giant octopus is part of a multi-layered hoax oh. that includes a sophisticated website, a documentary, fabricated newspaper articles, and glossy flyers directing tourists to a phantom Staten Island Ferry disaster memorial museum across the harbor. This is perfect. This yep. is so good. This is so good. It gets better. <clears throat> also, giant squid, that's what... My Josie talked about. Yep. Yep. So naturally, I was like, I wish to subscribe to your newsletter to yeah. learn more about your ideas. I'm so on board with this. Let but... me in. I want in on this. But whose newsletter am I subscribing to? I don't know. It is a man that the New York Times playfully referred to as the Banksy of Monuments. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I would be so mad. I'd be like, oh, don't be call so me pissed. the Banksy of anything. Come up with a better title. Right. Ugh. Call me, like, literally, there's Monument Man, man, man right there. That's pretty good, yeah. yeah. Uh, except unlike Banksy, there's no dumb mystery surrounding him. <laughs> oh, he, uh, okay. I get it. Not knowing who Banksy is is cool and interesting, but I don't care. Some of us are brave enough to Robin, take ownership from of our a, art. a rich area of mid, uh, mid yeah. England. I'm not kidding. Anyway. Some of us will uh, just show off and be like, yeah, this is my art. It's bad. Yeah. It's fine. Buy it, please. <laughs> yes. Buy this garbage <laughs> that I'm selling you. Yes. Yeah, I'm joking. I don't. I don't hate Banksy, but it's an easy joke. Uh, anyway, I thought you were going to say out, I'm joking. I don't hate my art, and then I, was I like, actually am Banksy. No. Oh, weird. Yeah, mid, <laughs> mid. Uh, buy our, buy his books. They're really good. Yeah, not Banksy's no, books. No, 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 no. Yours, um, yeah. <clears throat> Banksy's got enough money. But anyway, turns out. This was all orchestrated by a sculptor from Long Island by the name of Joseph Reginella. Reg but Reginella. Reginella. Reginald. Reginald Javits. <laughs> Reginald Javits. <laughs> Reginella. Wait, say his name again. I got I got caught on the Reg, reg part. Joseph okay. Reginella. Joseph Reginella. Uh, okay. Joseph Reginella. But who is this Joe and why did he go through all this trouble of making a fake monument? He's my hero. I know that much. Short answer. Obviously, because he could. Because he's fun. It's fun, right? Because it's fun. Yeah. So old Joey grew up in the late 70s and early 80s, loving monster, horror, and slasher films. And nice. when he was around 10 years old, uh, Friday the 13th comes out. And he's just like, dude, I got to figure out what this whole special effects thing is. Like, he just becomes obsessed with it. And he starts reading. Do you remember Fangoria magazine? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He was just like. He's obsessed with Fangoria. He's like reading every issue. He's like trying to learn as much as he can because there's, you know, it's like 1980, whatever. There's not really like a place he can go learn about it. So right. he dedicates his life, dedicates his life to it. And he grew up to work on a bunch of random stuff throughout the New York area, like some movie stuff, some museum stuff. He's just sort of like an artist about town. But this is not what gives him the bug. That comes a few years uh, after this. So back in 2015, your BFFs at BuzzFeed featured him in an article that I'm sure you saw. My BFFs at BuzzFeed. Yeah. Uh, so tell me if you remember seeing these. And you can... So look at the third one specifically. So for people who are not on the YouTube, you can describe <laughs> no. it to them. Have you seen these before? No. Oh, you never saw this. Okay. I love this. Oh. I actually saw this. Okay. So this is like a... What well, looks like a sculpture of a shark coming out of the ocean and eating a ship. And the, but the ship is like a bed for a baby. And there's a baby yeah. laying in it, a real baby. So it's not a real shark. It's just like a bed for a baby that looks like a shark eating a ship. And it's very yep. cute. Uh, oh. So this was known as, the, it's like the Jaws crib. So Jaws. Uh, this is recreating the ending of Jaws when Bruce the shark has eaten half the boat. And it's like at this angle when Clint slides right into the mouth of the shark. By the way, spoiler alert. Sorry. Yeah. So I'm he glad you assumed that I'd moment. never seen it because you're correct. I just, I assumed you yeah. hadn't seen it. Yeah. Also, so Joey, he's got this nephew that was recently born and he has like a good sense of humor. And uh, I guess maybe he probably didn't have a lot of money and he's like, oh, just build him a gift rather than like spending whatever two grand, three grand on something. But I as we all know, if you do that, you end up spending more money than it would have cost True. anyway, every time In your without time. fail. Yep. But he thinks to himself, man, it'd be hilarious if I built a crib where it looks like the baby's going to get eaten <laughs> by the shark. <laughs> Dude, if someone had given me that crib at like a, like a baby shower, I would have cried of happiness but i mean like, this is all i want exactly uh and because he was correct he decided to make it and they took some pictures buzzfeed got a hold of it uh, and the next thing you know bada bing bada boom he's mantis toboggan with a virus video <laughs> the virus video i gotta i gotta watch that today I'm, I'm i'm in the mood good good um it goes viral everyone's laughing it's a big hit everyone on the internet's talking about it but of course dumbasses also still exist yeah 
Why? Of the incident, he says, quote, it went viral and people were like, those horrible parents. And I was like, people believe that the kid's actually sleeping in this thing? (laughs) Oh, Oh, I'm sure. No. Oh, the worst places on the internet. And I mean this, the worst places. Yeah. Are parent forums. Oh, I believe some that. of the most vicious, mean people. I mean, I'm sure like uh, the dark web is bad too, but like on the not That's dark also web, bad. this is at the yeah. bottom of it. Just some of the worst. You're going to kill your baby. The baby's going to die if you do that. I heard about this happening and my friend's baby died doing that. And now you're going to kill your baby. All of it. It's just that. That's yeah. All. So he basically is just like, are people dumb? Which Idiots. The answer is obviously yes. Uh-huh. Uh, but he was like, no, I just built this thing because it would be a funny gag. Right. And then we took some pictures with the kid in it. And then that's it. And like, that's done. It's like, we're not letting that kid sleep in there every night. Like, just right. grow up. Um, <laughs> we're not idiots. Yeah. So he just sort of is like, okay, interesting, I guess. And so fast forward a couple years. And Joe is now riding the Staten Island Ferry with his nephew, which I couldn't figure out. I think he's got two nephews. Okay. I don't think it's the same one that was in the photo of the shark bed. That'd be cool. But I do think it's really funny in my brain that if it was the same kid in both stories. But I think he's got a second nephew. It was like a little bit younger. It was a little bit older than him. And so his nephew is apparently at that age where he's just asking question after question while they're riding this ferry, which I know you know about. Uh And funny enough, the kid is asking him about sharks in the New York Bay. And he's just like, are did there I sharks here? Like, sharks how many sharks? Earlier? You did earlier. Yeah, you did. <laughs> Why does this happen so often? I think when you're just in the, that's the first, it's Jaws, ironically. Yeah. yeah. It's like, you're you just immediately assume that like, oh, are there sharks here? Like, yeah. it's the first place our brains go. And he's like answering questions. And then he's sort of like, uh-huh. Yeah, no, I don't know. Whatever. Blah, blah, blah. Like, I think he sort of doesn't really know exactly what to tell the kids. So he just gets this stupid idea and he starts to mess with him, like kind of for, for fun. I think he's just sort of like goes into this playful mode and he goes like, no, but you know what did happen in the 1960s? One of these boats got pulled down by a giant octopus. <laughs> uncle Award. Best uncle. Yeah, exactly. It's uncle, uncle yeah, you always tell it. Yeah. That As is you always so tell, tell me, I have big uncle energy. You have, yeah. No, you have fun uncle energy. Yeah. To the point That's where my kid has a story. nickname for you. Which is? The Booger Man. Exactly. <laughs> because one time you pretended to eat your booger. <laughs> that you know how proud I am that I'm the booger man to her. Well, exactly. She, she kept singing a song about the booger man, <laughs> about you. She had a song going on because she was in this phase of singing songs for everybody, and she was like the booger That's man, awesome. the booger man. And I'm like, you're singing a song about okay, all right. You're he's a you're a legend in my house. Listen, we're homies. I get it. Yeah, we get it. We understand. Do you remember being a kid and just being like adults are weird and scary and then just yes. to have some adult being like, I'm actually an idiot. And then yes. kids are like, that's awesome. This is my favorite adult. <laughs> it's like liberating. It really is. So yeah, fu- funkle, fun, fun uncle energy. Fun uncle. I appreciate you that. Thank it. you. Um, so he goes, he tells, he tells his nephew that and he says, have you ever heard of the Staten Island Ferry Octopus Disaster? <laughs> <laughs> yes. And he spins this whole yarn and the kid's like eating it up and they're having a great time and they're like riding the boat and he's not asking him a bunch of questions. He just comes up with this whole weird story and they get back on land and Joe kind of thinks to himself and he's like, (laughs) he's like laughing. He's like, (laughs) you know, the kid totally bought it. Like it was a fun little like thing. Like we were just playing like whatever. And then he's like, you know, and he remembers that like adults with fully formed frontal lobes are tragically also extremely gullible. Uh Like what happened with the actual shark bed. And he's just like, you know, I wonder if I can get grown ass people to buy into this story as well. <laughs> Artistic disinformation. This is what this is, like experimental yeah. disinformation yeah. campaign. It's exactly what it is. Obsessed. I'm obsessed with this. Oh, and my he gosh. Goes, okay. I wonder what it would take <laughs> for that to happen. <laughs> so he goes back to his studio, goes back to his house or whatever, and he works and he like comes. He's like, whatever, sketching up ideas, working on different things. And it takes him about six months but he gets down to what he does best, which is sculpting. And after about six months, he finally completes a fake monument. And as I mentioned at the top, this 250 pound sculpture depicts a Staten Island ferry, the Cornelius G. Kolf being dragged under the waves by a giant octopus. Do you have a photo for me? Yes, I'm, I was gonna say I have plenty of, this This is an episode, by the way, for people who are listening, um, lots of visual aids. I forgot, so, I forgot to send photos but i have a ton of visual okay. aids as well so like the maps of the cow tunnel all mapped out up on the youtube so you know so actually let me send you first i'll send you the full picture of it and then i'll send you some some close-ups and we'll get into the stuff that's oh it, my but. goodness oh my goodness 
<laughs> it's awesome. This is amazing. This it's looks rad as hell. This looks so real. Mm-hmm. Oh, that is so cool. I just feel like a dumb kid. Oh, it's so cool. Uh, it is awesome. Yeah, you should describe it to the audience. Yeah, it's it's like the most theatrical looking, dramatic yeah. looking movie octopus. Like think of like Pirates of the Caribbean, Caribbean or whatever. Yeah. The part where it comes out and just pulls the ship under. It's doing that, but like front of the ship goes first. It's like pulling it down into the ocean, and the ship is poking it, it, out. It kind of, to me, echoes the the Jaws baby. It's the same. Yeah. It's a similar idea where it's like the ship's kind of at an Tilted. angle. It's tilted, yeah. going into the mouth of the beast, except <laughs> so now you have cool. awesome tentacles everywhere and it's cool as shit. It's an awesome sculpture. It looks really cool to the point where I'm like upset that it's not like a real thing in a museum because I was like, I want to see that. Yeah, this is, uh, I love this so much. And the little plinth that it's on looks so good. It looks amazing. It's a really fantastic piece. Yeah. There it is, like in, its, in all its full glory. And then there's a plaque on the front of uh-huh. it. Do you want to read it? Yeah, I'll read it. It says... <laughs> Dedicated in loving memory to the passengers and crew of the Cornelius G. Clough. Who, <laughs> it's not funny. It is funny because it's not real. It's not real. <laughs> yeah. Who lost their lives on November 22nd, 1960. Wait, isn't that the day JFK was shot? Oh. Oh, sorry. Okay. You can edit that out. Who lost? No, no, no. It's, that's part of it. You, you're getting it. Who lost their lives on November 22nd, 1963 in one of the most mysterious and tragic maritime disasters in American history, erected by the Staten Island Ferry Memorial Foundation and Chemical Bank. Yep. (laughs) What's that? (laughs) So while JFK was getting shot in the head, this fake disaster was happening? That's exactly right. Oh. Um, oh. That's getting ahead. Let me let me oh, give you a little bit of background, bad. and then I'll get to that. No, 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 you're not wrong. It's, you didn't do anything wrong. It's great. I'm I glad remember that you like five that. dates. Yeah, and, and I'm surprised one of you remember that, that specific date. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so before I get into that, uh, you might be thinking that 250 pounds is kind of light no. for like a, what looks like a bronze statue. I just think True. that thing is big. Look at it. That thing should weigh like 3,000 pounds. That should be massive. Yeah. Uh, oh, it looks, yeah. I can't tell exactly how tall it is, but it's probably about like, I don't know, four feet tall maybe. Yeah, probably. It's a big piece. Or like almost five feet. It's up there. Yeah, it's big. Yeah. So why didn't he make a real one? And the idea was that he could pack it up as needed in case any from anyone from the city ever Smart. tried to take it down. And it would be lost forever. So this thing moves around. So he like, <laughs> he packs it up in a box. He takes it to Battery Park and he just like plops it down and then sort of sits nearby and like watches people look at it and then like has a laugh. Uh-uh. He would fool. It would fool me. I'd be like, get out my phone and yeah. immediately Wikipedia. That's okay. So that's exactly right. So he ahead. makes an accompanying website, a documentary of fabricated <laughs> newspaper articles and glossy flyers, directing tourists to an imaginary Staten Island Ferry Disaster <laughs> Memorial Museum near Whoa. the real Snug Harbor Cultural Center across the harbor on Staten Island. <laughs> so it's sort of rooted in all this stuff that's real. So yeah. there's um. There's a the website, right? The website that has all the information about it. The fake. It's a real website about yeah. the fake tragedy. So the excerpt from the website says, It was close to 4 a.m. on the quiet morning of November 22nd, 1963, when the steam ferry Cornelius G. Kolf vanished without a trace. <laughs> on its way with nearly 400 people, mostly on their way to work, the disappearance of the, the, disappearance of the Cornelius G. Kolf remains both one of New York's most horrific maritime tragedies and perhaps its most intriguing mystery. <laughs> Eyewitness accounts describe large tentacles which pulled the ferry beneath the surface only a short distance from its destination at Whitehall Terminal in Lower Manhattan. Nobody on board survived and only small pieces of wreckage have been found, strangely with large large suction Uh cup-shaped marks on them. The only logical conclusion scientists and officials could point to was that the boat had been attacked by a massive octopus roughly the size of the ship. (laughs) Adding to the tragedy is that this disaster went almost completely unnoticed by the public as later that day, another more quote-unquote newsworthy tragedy would befall the nation when beloved President John Fitzgerald Kennedy was assassinated. The Staten Island Ferry Disaster Museum hopes to correct this oversight (laughs) by preserving the memory of those lost in the tragedy and educating the public about the truth behind the only known giant octopus ferry attack in the tri-state area, end quote. (laughs) In the tri-state area is my favorite addition to that. Saying that there has been other giant octopus attacks in other areas. Yeah. <laughs> there has not been. And and that's the secret sauce here. Because he, by burying it in the headlines of the day JFK gets mm-hmm. assassinated, Genius. suddenly all these people are like, oh, shit, that's why. And they're makes like, oh, sense. it makes sense that nobody would have ever covered this. Like, yeah. I, I guess, weird. 
Uh, I'll be damned. Sidebar, you Genius. can watch the short doc on YouTube. It's all really? still up. Yeah. It's okay. short. It's like uh, some. It's like four, I think maybe like five, six minutes at most. I um, love this man. I know. Me too. He's, he's, be- he's what great. What a, a, it gets a better. legend. How? Oh, it gets better. Um, How does this get which, better? Which, by the way, <laughs> when you watch the doc, frankly, from a lot of the crap I see online and like on History Channel or whatever, it really doesn't seem that indistinguishable. <laughs> and so if you're sort of sitting there like Googling something Half and you find a website. Attention. Yeah. And then you see like a, it's like, if you're like on the boat when you're just like looking it up and then you see a doc and you're trying to watch it while it's like it. I could totally see if you're not like if your bullshit meter is not up. Yeah. You could just be like, oh, yeah, that's a, probably a real thing. And it would be really confusing. Wouldn't have fooled me because you know what? I know. Yeah. I know the true. death toll of some of the biggest yep. disasters in the United States because I go back to that list over and over. That's true. You do. Um, but he did. He did his homework. He was pretty. He was pretty thorough about it, especially considering that he's just like a dude. Oh, like, I would have just thought it would be this. a funny guy. I will say. Yeah. I would have gone down the rabbit hole trying to figure it out and then been like, wait a second. After like days. Well, yeah. So, so anyways, it was never meant to be a whole thing. He just thought it was like a fun whatever <laughs> gag that just sprang out of making like a joke with his nephew for a second time, his other nephew. Uh, and then eventually the press catches wind and then the cat's out of the bag. They uh, write all these articles where it's just like, oh, there's a fake monument, blah, blah, blah. And he's like, oh, cool. That was fun. That's, <laughs> I'm glad we did that. But old Joey, <laughs> old yep. Joey Jojo Jr. Shabadoo, he was not one to rest on his laurels. No, he he's got He's like- he gets inspired. He's like, I'm going to do this again. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, I'm this ready. This time, it was the Brooklyn Bridge Elephant Stampede. <laughs> that could have happened. That's the thing. This one's even more interesting. Okay. This is again from the website. October 29th, 1929 is known as Black Tuesday, the day say. of the great stock market crash. <laughs> to others... It is known as the Brooklyn Bridge Elephant Stampede, one of the most horrific land mammal tragedies in our (laughs) nation's history. This year was even more publicized than most as the circus advertised the arrival of its new star, Jumbo. The 13-foot tall African elephant was to lead other elephants across the bridge and crowds came from miles around to see Jumbo in all of his massive glory as he led the greatest show on earth into the greatest city on earth. Believable. But before they could finish crossing, something spooked them and a stampede broke out. <laughs> the elephants bulldozed anyone and anything in their path. Here's my favorite line. Bones were crushed, <laughs> bodies impaled upon tusks, <laughs> helpless citizens dragged through the streets like rag dolls. <laughs> then it was down to bro- it was down to brought from Broadway to Wall Street where more chaos unfolded. While the distressed leaders of the financial sector dissect, er, descended into panic, many taking their own lives, the Brooklyn Bridge elephant stampede would go down in history as the greatest single animal-driven disaster of the modern era. Basically, finance bros are like jumping off buildings and Killing unaliving themselves. themselves as elephants stampeded through the crowds. <laughs> it's so metal. I love it so much. And there's that little nugget of like, wait a second. Could Is that this- have happened? Maybe it feels All right, like it I'm going to show you. So here's the the big statue or the big picture of the statue. And then I'll show you highlights. Okay. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> oh, he even made him look all aged. Like, yeah, the, these ones the look copper. like. Yeah, exactly. He made the copper green on these ones to really sell it. So why don't you describe what it looks like? This it is, is three the, circus elephants. <laughs> Whoa, look at that. It's three circus. <laughs> I just saw what's happening. <laughs> <laughs> there's three circus outfits and under each of them. i love this man so much oh, okay all right so the three circus elephants are all stomping on people so in one of them there's one that's there's a guy laying face down and the elephant got, got a leg on him and then this middle one that made me laugh like wanted to cry this person's like getting crunched like <laughs> the elephant's holding his legs and just smashing him into the ground, it looks like. Yeah, and with this, his tusk, he's holding tusk. it. He's, I'm sorry, not his, his tusk, trunk. his trunk. And the person is like limp and sagging. <laughs> and then behind him is a third elephant also holding a person or trampling a person. I didn't And they've all got the like the star headband they, on, they like all, the, the, the circus Ringling ones, like Brothers Dumbo headbands. or whatever. Ringling Brothers, yeah. This is um, beautiful. This is beautiful. It's brilliant, this right? It's a work of art. 
Now, you're going to like this one even more now, though. I mean, so now I'm going to get into explaining this one. This one's really interesting. So just like before, he makes an awesome statue, yeah. accompanying website, brochures, fake museum, and a documentary, the whole nine yards. Now, uh, historically, obviously, it seems more obviously suspect since it's on Black Tuesday. Yeah. But interesting, there actually is a historical basis for this specific no. idea. You're killing me. So, Are you serious? Yes. I'm so excited. All right. So just six days after the Brooklyn Bridge opened to the public back in the 1800s, yeah. a rumor spread that the new bridge was about to collapse <laughs> because we're humans and we're always Can't shut dumb. up. We can't shut up. Yeah. Uh, and people were, you know, understandably even more dumb back then where they're like, they don't understand. You just, just look at the Brooklyn Bridge. Yeah. Why would you think that thing's going to collapse? Well, it just looks I would like... think that it's a huge new bridge and it's scary. It's yeah, like... that's true. And there's cows everywhere. Why would why would you trust anything? That's true. There are cows everywhere. You're slipping in cow poo, slipping in blood. Why would you Hitting cross your a bridge? Yeah. So there's these rumors going around. Everyone's like, did you hear? It's about to collapse. Oh, it's not stable. Oh, like what happened to Tower 6, uh, Tower seven. 7, whatever it was. Tower 7, yeah. Oh, yeah, steel The beams. Brooklyn Bridge was an inside job, et cetera. <laughs> so on May 30th, 1883, a random lady, because you know, everyone's just walking across the yeah. bridge, a random lady trips and falls down some stairs of the bridge that's like on the yeah. end of it. Uh, I think it's on the Manhattan side. I forget which I think side it is it on the I Manhattan side. Tree. So somebody falls and trips and it's sort of like she eats shit. It's like a pretty bad spill. And it's not funny. upon watching that one person trip and fall, another lady starts screaming because oh. she's like in shock of seeing this woman fall and eat shit like down a flight of stairs. Now, you hear the commotion of one person uh -huh. falling. You hear the commotion of another person screaming at the top of her lungs. All of a sudden, there's a chain reaction and people start losing their shit it's and they think that the whole bridge is about to collapse. A human crush, as they call it. It's a human crush. So they all like try and flee to get off of the bridge at the same oh, time. No. Oh, and no. And there's a stampede. Oh, no. How many die? This a is lot? real. No, I know. 12 people died, oh. <laughs> 35 wounded. Mm. One of my biggest fears in life is to be trapped in a building and get caught in a crush. That, that would be terrible. It's so scary. Don't yeah. ever read about all of them. Do not. So 35 people went injured, 12 people dead. <laughs> and oh. the city of New York is like, dude, what are we going to do? This is insane. <laughs> like, this bridge is not going to collapse. How do we convince people? And they have this huge PR oh. mess on their hands. And no. so P.T. Barnum. No way. He's like, listen, New York. I got a solution that'll work for everybody. We're going to reassure the public of the bridge's safety while being able to publicize my circus. And on May 17th, 1884, Barnum marched 21 elephants across the bridge. 21? 21 elephants, along with 17 camels. <gasps> Shout out. Shout out to our camel brethren. I'm, uh, I, can, I can't like wrap my head around this. Hold on. P.T. Barnum is so devious and so insane. I, okay, hold on. I can't believe the two these two things happen, but separately. Yeah. This is genius. Well, no, one is a result of the other thing. Yeah. You, you take two things that might spark a memory in someone's head and you could... Whoa. So that becomes sort of the basis of that story. Um, <laughs> although I, also here's some like cool, fun drawings oh, from yeah, the yeah. time of it. Um, that speaking of what you were saying earlier about like a tab that you could have opened up, I was like, that was one I really wanted to go do a deeper dive into and understand because I was really interesting. Look at that. Whoa. But yeah, like, like you said, like the thing that's so interesting is, is that he, he roots it in these stories that are historical and you're like, yeah. oh, and then he masks it with the date yeah, and then he has the documentary and then he's got like, you know, some flyers and brochures, like it, it, it he really commits to the gag. And he never, ever does um, anything too serious on like a historical scale like none of these things could be considered like wait that doesn't fit in with the time or that doesn't you know it's like they're extremely well done that yeah these these are plausible in, in, in a distant kind of way yeah not to mention as you said the sculptures themselves are just awesome as hell so they look good. great yeah. yeah that one had like aged copper on it it was it was it awesome looked fantastic he's a really talented guy Anyway, uh, that that whole story was interesting, and I might read about that at some point about P.T. Barnum crossing the bridge. I thought that was such a crazy. Yeah, I was like, that's a tab in and of itself that I should have gotten, should have gone into. P.T. Barnum himself, in, dude, he's nuts. Yeah. He did some insane things, and a lot of illegal um, things too. Yeah, very much so. So, of course, 
people start doing the same thing happens. People put two and two together, bada bing, bada boom, the hoax is over, the press finds out, people are writing about it, blah, blah, blah. But Joey's just like, yeah, you know what? I'm just getting started. So he slaps together a couple more. Yes, he does. And in the interest of time, I'm going to go no. over them more broadly. Okay. But if you want to know more, you can go to the website, nycurbanlegends.com. That's where. The, so now it's like a known thing. Yeah. It's no longer like this thing where people are. I mean, some people get confused because they may not know about it. But from what I can understand, it's kind of like an inside joke within people in New York. City's nuts. So he did a few more. So I'm going to go through them. Okay. So the first one up, it's called Ratman in memory of Nathaniel Katz, accredited <laughs> for introducing rats to New York City. <laughs> I love this. Look at that. <laughs> it's just a, it's the bust of a guy and it's just crawling in rats. Like he's got rats on his shoulders, crawling up his head. That Nathaniel expression Katz. is hilarious, too. He just looks like he sm- To me, he looks like Kurt Vonnegut. He looks like just Vonnegut yeah. who smelled like the worst fart. He like also that's looks the expression. Like he's like, yeah, I brought rats to New York. Yeah. That. He looks proud of it in a weird way. <laughs> oh, okay. Can I read the thing? Okay, wait, no. Let me let me oh, read you this okay. thing first because it might be funnier. So it says in the story, uh, and of course he has like a whole story, right? So yeah. in the story, cats pissed everyone off in the city because he was like, "No, dude, rats are pets, and that's cool." <laughs> and like some people were like his followers, and they're like, "Yeah, rats are pets. This is great." And everyone's like, "Dude, you're ruining New York City. They're like shitting in our food. This is terrible." And like eventually the city gets mad and Governor DeWitt Clinton decreed that in a public spectacle of punishment, cats should be catapulted into the Hudson River. <laughs> Which he was, and may or may not have drowned, but regardless, after that, he was no longer seen or heard from again. I love this so much. This one's a little less believable, but so yeah. funny. I love it. His name's Cats. That's the best part. Cats and rats. <laughs> Nathaniel Cats. I'm Nate Cats, and these are my rats. I'm Nate Cats. I brought the rats in. You don't like them? Sit oh, on uh, it. Sit on it. I okay. do want to know how rats did get to the... Were they already here? Yeah. No, they weren't already here. Nathaniel, Ra- Nathaniel Katz brought them, obviously. Okay, whatever. Whatever. Okay, next I up... Will, okay, hold on. What if I ever die? Which yes. I will. Um, yes. But if I don't, if I do, I want someone to make a statue of me covered in rats like this. Okay? Consider it done. Okay? I need to yes. be swarming I can't him. guarantee you that it'll be a good stu- no, sculpture, but worst case scenario, if I'm the one to do it. want it to be a good one. Okay, good. Anyway, next up is the Bulldog Bootleggers of New York City. Okay. That is this right here. Again, please describe it to the non Uh it's a it's a bulldog wearing what looks like a like a mess like a little messenger cap mm-hmm. and a vest. And that's it. Just... Yeah, he looks like one of those ones from the dogs playing poker. Yeah, he does. He does. He looks like uh he looks like he could be like taking bets at a horse track. He looks like a gangster, honestly. He does, yeah. He's got like that gangster expression. So in 1927, Battery Park was a hub for rum runners and organized crime to distribute whiskey and spirits throughout New York City. It's a little known fact that bulldogs were used to help make these deliveries to speakeasies all over the city. They are the unsung heroes of the Prohibition era. (laughs) The unsung heroes. Okay. That's incredible. Bill McCoy bootlegger honoring his beloved bulldog pork chop. There's that okay. There's this one which this makes me laugh really hard. I love this one, very much unbelievable. Although, is it? I don't know. Let's this see. Is, I'm gonna show you the wide shot of it first. Okay. Oh, wait, what's going on here? The title of this one is the Ed Koch Wolf <laughs> Foundation. <laughs> okay. Sorry. So loud. Ooh. I'm so confused. So this guy is getting eat attacked by three wolves. Hold on, I gotta. <laughs> the many. <laughs> I just read the thing. It says, dedicated to the many tourists that go missing every year in New York City. And a reminder, I can't read this. It's a little bit uh, blown out, huh? And a reminder to why the parks close at dusk. Erected by Mm -hmm. the Ed Koch Koch Wolf. Wow, why? (laughs) Look at this close up of the wolves. (laughs) It's so demonic. (laughs) They look insane. They, they do look insane. It's really funny. And this guy's like, oh, please, pleading for his they life. They look possessed. Yeah, they look like possessed demon wolves. And it's just a, it's just dedicated to all the tourists that go missing. There's nothing so about it, wolves on there. In the late 1970s, New York Mayor Edward Koch <laughs> launched an unprecedented campaign against subway graffiti. 
Okay. Uh, so apparently at some point he said this. He didn't actually do it, obviously, but the city employed a new new guardians to patrol its vast train yards, wolves. So basically Ed Koch, when he was just like, I hate like graffiti, they're like, let's just let's sick wolves on everybody so they don't do it. This is a layered joke. This is years old. Yeah, this is a very like inside New York joke. Um, captured from upstate New York and set loose in various borough depots, the wolves successfully kept taggers at bay <laughs> until anti-graffiti technology eliminated the need for the animals. And at that point, the wolves migrated underground. Oh. And since then, wolf packs have survived and even thrived in New York's labyrinth tunnels, emerging in local parks only on tunnels. occasion to hunt in the moonlight for live prey. They're eating all the... That's where all that's the cows the went. The wolves ate them all. The, wolves, the, the tunnel wolves ate them. Do they also meet in the middle and, and have a, a three way kiss? They can kiss. They can kiss. They can kiss the they wolves, can kiss the cows, the and the lizards. Yeah. So basically, at, I, I guess Ed Koch was just like, let's sick wolves on these bastards who are doing graffiti. And then so he was like, oh, that would be really funny if they actually did that. And then so he made a whole story where like they did that and they killed everybody and then they got replaced by tech and then they just let these wolves <laughs> loose in the ton in the subways instead. So like they're just attacking people on the subway train. And Amazing. It's tourists. This is, an incre- this is incredible because you read that and you're like, oh, and he want- reading that, I was like, I got to go find out more. And that's the joke. Yep. It gets you to go yep. read about it. And you end the story yep. with an insane idea of wolves attacking people and dragging them into their underground lairs. Incredible. This man's a genius. Incredible. He really, I this really is- admire him. And does he just keep, is he still doing this? Like he, he does this he all does the time? The- yeah, or- he's. He, not like all the time. Okay, so there's one more. Oh, there's okay. one last one that I'm going to talk about. Uh, and it is called, it's called the New York City UFO Tugboat Abduction. This memorial statue at Battery Park stands in loving remembrance of the vanished crew of the tugboat Maria who vanished on the night of July 13th, 1977, while investigating what appeared to be a private aircraft crash on New York Harbor. Oh, this sounds, and this he, is cool. This one, this statue is also very cool. Low key would love to have this in my house. Oh, whoa. Okay, so it's a look, what looks like a dead alien. <laughs> mm-hmm. There's a full blown alien in this laying on the ground, and there's a guy standing over him, like a sailor or a fisherman, and looking, he's like looking up at the sky and like he's looking at a UFO above him or something. Uh, that alien, beautifully made, beautifully designed, yeah, beautifully sculpted. Wow, ew. <laughs> so. <laughs> July 13th, you guys have got to go on YouTube. You've got, yeah, you, you really got to watch really this. Need you got to see these. Like these, these, this is this is a highly visual episode that it's worth going and looking because these sculptors are amazing. And he's very talented. Yeah. Uh, Nineteen, sorry, uh, July 13th, 1977, is the night of the famous New York blackout. Oh right, where everything. So, <gasps> genius. Uh, anyway, these stories are awesome as hell and absolutely the kind of shit. So you know what it made me think of? What? Not to plug my own shit, but Do I was it. like, when I was doing my my, my when I was doing my Mothman books, yeah. my Mothman book, this is exactly the same uh, line of thinking that I had, which was because it's all based on you know different neighborhoods throughout Southern California. So it was right. like, okay, well, what's a funny, weird, insane thing that happened in you know uh, some neighborhood like Silver Lake or Melrose or or like an inside whatever, uh, Catalina, yeah. yeah. And then I would t- t- take that and I extrapolated from it and made it something like totally insane. And like, it's a really fun way of engaging with like half history of the area, but then yeah. also being really playful with it. So and that I feel book totally does that like really well. And these also are exactly like that because you, cause, he, yeah, it's like a, it, they're very New York in their essence. Yes. All yeah, of these are very it, New York. And so is the New humor. York stories. Exactly. Yeah. I, I really, really admire him. I think he's like a really, not just the sculpt itself, but I think it's like such a funny yeah. uh, thing that he made. I think it's really fantastic. And he's not um, doing it for like viral clout. He's like doing it because he wants to. Yeah. And it's and I think the other thing that's really great about it that I really appreciate is that um, both with the, um, the crib, right, with Jaws. Right. And with like the first one with the, uh, with the squid, or sorry, the octopus. Yeah. It starts... As this like playful thing with his nephews and just like it's being like a little kid. It's like he's in he's engaging with this side of him of just being like, oh, I'm playing around with this kid. And then it sparks this fun idea that's like totally insane and just like runs with it with like these incredible adult level skills of sculpture. So it's like it feels like a little kid playing, but like as a grown up, it's really fantastic. He's been to like art school and knows history. Yeah. So he's like fun uncling all of New York. Yeah, that's a great way of putting it. Actually, yeah. he's fun uncling the entire city. It's <laughs> it's really great. I I really I can't. Are any of uh, these up or are are like can we go see these in person or have they been taken so, down? So the whole so the whole thing like he has, like I said earlier like he makes them light so like he takes them right, for the day right. 
and then sets them up and then like Got he's it. always worried that it's sort of like an insta like, like a temporary like, like almost like graffiti installation art. thing yeah it's like a performance art. so you could still see it it kind of depends i think he, i think it said that he goes like on the weekends okay when he's got time so it's also kind of contingent upon like if he feels like going to set it up and doing it and then sort of <laughs> hanging out nearby but he's not it's like sitting better. there being like look at mine right yeah. So we could technically try to go to Battery Park when we're in New York. I would and feel see if he's there. so lucky to get to Me see too. one of those. Um, so what a cool uh, story. Lastly, I'll say not that we should be promoting somebody else's merch, but he does have a shop where he you, he has some of the stuff. Like he does like little Christmas ornaments of it and like really? a small. Oh, yeah. you can actually have that alien, the dead alien in your house. Oh, the small scale sculpture of some of them. So I think he uses all these to fund uh, new, like all the all the sculptures are funded by this gift shop that he has. Oh, cool. Which is a virtual gift shop because none of this exists in real life. Right. I want anyway. cr- Dude, I think my favorite one out of all of those was the rat one. Yeah. I love the rat I one. I figured you'd love the rat one. Yeah. I just, I love how his face was swarmed in rats. This is really funny. I, again, I'm low key convinced that it's Kurt Vonnegut is who we used, but it I looks can't like tell. him. Also, this like Hollywood just keeps turning out the same movie over and over again. This, this just awesome. do this. This 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 your movies. Yeah, I mean, this is sort of like how viral marketing works. But That's like true. he's he's not doing it to market something. He's just doing it because the act itself is something fun. Like you're actually giving yeah. somebody it's art an experience. Yeah. It's like, yeah. An, it's own sort of, like you said, it's performance. Art. It's like somebody goes yeah, and they get duped, but like in this sort of harmless, but like funny in way. In a fun that's way. Not like mean. Yeah. It really does walk the line between like, I don't know how he does it. He like, he, it's like not mean. It doesn't make you feel stupid. Right. It's fun. It's, it's also very like very, like he inhabits this really strange like realm of performance art that I can't quite put my finger on. Like he, he's, yeah. it is performance art, but it's also sculpture and it's also history and it's also a hoax. Yeah. It's awesome. I love everything about oh, it. Oh yeah. This is great. Oh, um, so cool. Anyway, that's it. <laughs> Salute you. to Joseph Reginella. Reginella. We are huge fans of your work. Reginella. Huge fans. Uh, amazing. All these things are hilarious. I was so excited when I found, I was like, oh, this is great. I was like, you're going to love this. Such a good tab. I think we both had to pretty pretty two pretty good ones today but it both yeah, talked about really tunnels one. and sharks and yep of course overlap again new york new york, new york of course and uh I, the city's great city's nothing here's the thing this couldn't happen anywhere else nope the greatest city in the world filled with cow blood and octopus attacks <laughs> i just want to see i want to see a, a movie of it me too incredible um thank you anyway uh, that was so that good is, that was good those are a couple fun ones okay so we're coming up to time to close our tabs what do you think should it be a Ooh. squid attack should it i think cow slaughter is probably yeah. a little bit too visceral for no people. it's not going to be or good blood pouring I, I, everywhere should it be like blood mm, like, should we the squeeze sound, the it could be blood out of a cat out of our tabs maybe you can sound like the sound of liquid hitting something and then we'll think it's blood but somebody else can think it's lemon juice like or pee oh yeah lemon juice um Maybe. let's see that's a little visceral or we could or we could just do like a, the sound of a ship being crunched up by. <laughs> okay yeah i like that a ship yeah. being crunched up by like an octopus that sounds fun that, if that's too specific like... Alyssa, then i don't know just we'll we'll both or just... elephant sta- oh no elephant Elephants! stampede yeah elephant stampede and yeah. like the sound of their dun, 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 and then yeah. and then like a wall street broker and getting his head screaming. exploded like a grape yeah <laughs> yes like a yes. grape that was so visceral. I could like bring feel back that. the Brooklyn Bridge elephant stampede. <laughs> I want to watch a Wall Street broker get crushed. Uh, right. But yeah, you got to add some screams in there. So a bunch of elephants yeah. and then people being like screaming. Okay. Okay. You want to count us down? Uh, I did it last week. It's your turn. Oh, you did. Okay. You ready? Yeah. Three, two, one. Okay. All right. There we go. Be gone. Listener mail. Okay. Moving on to listener email. You're up first. Yes. Mine is uh, from, this is from William. And the title of the email is Nikola Jokic, horse girl plus wife guy. All right. And William says, hi, 500 tabs. I found the show through the Nikola Jokic story and it was delightful. I was wondering if we would get like basketball fans. You know what I mean? That, I think that short got like a lot because we back when we were first launching the podcast we i was doing uh right. we were doing tabs individually and then that didn't really work that well so right. we stopped doing it we just only released episodes but the Jokic tab by itself i think is like Did our a most lot. watched video oh. i think it's the most watched video of all of our youtube ones yeah. i had no idea well i'm glad we got 
to basketball people. So yeah. I loved how you covered his love of horses. However, I think you didn't touch on what makes him me personally love him. The fact that Nikola Jokic is the ultimate wife guy. Before I go on, this is all alleged. And I've Allegedly. only heard this from Nuggets staff and journalists who have been covering Jokic. This is not okay. confirmed. Before Yo- before Nikola played in the NBA, he was offered a multi-million dollar contract to play in Europe. Problem. His mm-hmm. high school sweetheart, Natalia, now wife, was offered a scholarship to play college volleyball in Oklahoma. And he wants mm-hmm. to stay with her. Allegedly, the solution was to play so badly, the worst game of his life, that the European team rips up the contract because he knew it was the only way he could join her in America. So this is like a fan theory. So what, you say? That's a coincidence. Maybe true. But this coming from people who have been speaking to Nikola for 10 years? So, Jokic threw away millions of dollars so he could be with his high school sweetheart, Natalia, had a beautiful daughter, and now wears his wedding ring on his shoelaces in the game. In every game, quote... I have a wedding ring on my shoe just because it's family, something that is just really important to me. <laughs> Hell yeah. So, Nicola, just be like, this is why. Why do you care? Our basketball king. Yeah. Also, to not also to not leave out the horses, horses less than 24 hours after winning the bronze medal in the Olympics, he skipped the closing ceremonies in Paris and was right back. I was going to say, I was watching the Olympics and I saw him. I was like, Jokic! I, fe- I just fell in love with him all over again. Yeah, right so now he after that. he got the bronze medal and then he just ditched and <laughs> and went right back to the track watching horses racing. So, so he was more. like, "I don't have time for this Olympic stuff." Absolutely love this man. I so love much. the show, and even if this never makes it on the actual podcast, I hope you guys mm. enjoy this. Thank you, William. Little did you know that it's on the show. I'm going to choose to believe that that he played so badly. That he had to go with his wife. They, like, you they know. give him more money, probably. They're yeah. just like, no, now we're going to give you like a 30 year contract. And he's, he's like, like no! no! Just want to be with my wife and horses. His whole, I think we said this before, but like his whole meme is like, when you get rewarded at work for doing a good job oh, yeah. with more work. And he's always just like, no. <laughs> uh, I love, love it. him. Love it. Icon. William, thank you. Thank you for that email. Uh, and lucky for you, we got to read it online. Yeah. Or not online, on the episode. On the line. On the line. Uh, Okay, this uh, next listener email is from Carrie and Maggie from Juneau, Alaska. Oh. Hi, Cobb and Hannah. Pandas aren't the only dumb bear. Oh. Ever since my sister and I were little, little, our childhood has been defined by one thing. B-E-A-R-S. Bears. Ah, bear girls. There's the bear that broke into the house while we were babysitting. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> the painfully vivid memory of our half-naked dad chasing after a bear that was stealing our garbage can with a two-by-four. Ah, Alaska, dude. Seriously. Mm. And tourists, of course, constantly attempting to pet bears. But it gets worse. <laughs> Don't you mean better? It's better. That's true. It's like Florida man, but with bears. In 2018, a bear broke into the local hospital and not to be upstaged by the bear that oh. ro- not to be upstaged by the bear that robbed a nearby convenience store. <laughs> oh, I saw that. It just went in and took stuff, like Listen, food. Does it count as robbing? No. I feel like I said this with another tab. It's it's about house. Another animal. We're in his uh, house. His right. Land. It's like it's it's not robbing. It is just taking the resource that is a bear doesn't like subscribe to our laws. No, it just wants what food. What are you gonna do? Put me in bear jail? <laughs> Ooh, that could mean That's several That's things. Thing. That's true. Um, so meet our hometown heroes, our favorite stupid bears from our two favorite stupid tabs. <laughs> Carrie's is bear bites butt, outhouse horror story. <laughs> and Maggie's is bear busts birthday bash, eats cake and leaves. <laughs> yes. Okay, wait. Help us inform the public of how these stupidly adorable creatures act. Continue. Yes. So wait, does Alaska, is it just like it starts with a B? So we're going to try to make as many... Silly headlines that all start with the letter B as we can with bear. Just... Bears, beats, Battlestar oh, Galactica. Oh, yeah, from that show. Um, so in regards to the uh, Haynes Woman Braves outhouse encounter with a black bear. Oh, scary. <laughs> so she basically goes to take a shit in an outhouse. I take the headlamp and grab the lid of the toilet seat and lift it up. Eric Stevenson says, right at the level of the toilet seat, maybe an inch or two below is a gigantic <gasps> bear face Whoa! looking back up at me. In the toilet? Yeah, he it closed was... the lid and ran back to the yard as fast as they could. Sick. That bear was just chilling in a bunch of poo. Oh. Yeah, I don't understand 
Was it in the poo? Sorry, I'm reading this as we're recording. I didn't read this whole article yet. <laughs> we are professional. Yeah, she went to the outhouse. It was in the dead winter, so I didn't think to do it. I got in there and sat the toilet seat and something just immediately bit me in the butt. I oh, jumped and screamed. It bit yeah. her? I bet it was warm in there. I bet that bear was like, oh, nice. That's probably what it was, yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll, um, I'll anyway, sleep in a pile horrific. of human poo. That's, that is human a true feces. horror story. That's yeah. like my worst fear to get bit by anything on the toilet. Oh, okay. Yeah. So anyway, uh, <laughs> help us inform the public of how these stupidly adorable creatures act. Our very best, Carrie and Maggie. P.S. Bonus tab. Alaskans have a real dark sense of humor, and I've grown up with jokes about a true question mark story of a duck hunter getting trapped in the muskeg and being pulled in half by a helicopter. I'm sorry. Yeah, by a helicopter in a botched rescue attempt while looking oh. for an uncle about this to show a friend. I found this questionably true tab and stashed away for a rainy day. Ooh. So, gross. Uh, that's all stuff we can look into. I will. Well, thank you, guys. Um, yeah, uh, thank Alaska you very much. Alaska is the Florida is, is very similar in the way that I'm scared to go there. Yeah. But I'm sure um, it's beautiful. Yeah, I've always wanted to go. I'm, I'm very curious yeah. to go to Alaska. Do they have uh, Comic-Con is, uh, you guys- there? Do they have an? Al- I wonder if there is an Alaska Con. Actually, we I have should no do. Idea. We should do an Alaska Comic Con. Hold on. I would love if they would invite us to be exhibitors at Alaska. We'll come speak. Yeah, yeah. We'll I'll gladly look, come to Alaska. I'll let a bear bite me. Oh yeah, there's one in Fairbanks on fe- <laughs> in it? February, twenty second and twenty really third. It's probably Listen, extremely if, cold. If you're willing to fly us up, we'll come. Yeah, we'll come. <laughs> and then the Reddit post. Uh, under r slash Fairbanks, Alaska mm-hmm. Comic Con is so disorganized. <laughs> <laughs> Which convention isn't? Oh, there's also one in Anchorage called Arctic Comic Con. Ooh, that sounds fun. Whichever one is closest to Juno is the one we should yeah, go to. So yeah. we can have Carrie and Maggie come see us. Yes, this is awesome. Okay, thank you guys. Um, thank you, Carrie and Maggie. If you, the listener, has a tab that you would like us to uh, read on the show in the uh, listener email section, please send us an email to 500 open tabs at gmail.com. That's five zero zero. Give us a little short blurb, send us the link. And most importantly for us, tell us where you're from. That's a fun thing to hear. We also will accept voicemail submissions. If you want to do like a little voice memo, the best way to do it is to write out your email and then just read that. If you're nervous about having to, you know, freestyle it when you're recording but uh trying to keep them to around a minute if you can but those are very exciting they are fun it's fun to hear people and uh join um, the discord speaking of people it is always a party over there in some form or another we're talking about something weird because turns out people who like have a ton of open tabs are all very similar and yeah. so uh, the discord is fun and then we also have uh youtube again we're trying to hit we're trying to hit a thousand yeah, subscribers we'd love to try that that's our next goal do i even say that real, real quick about the discord yeah. um apparently last i checked there uh there seems to be a uh movement starting in there to get us to do a live stream from a costco food court that's right which to me is like Duh. you mean to do a live stream from where i already am yeah. all the time I'm, I'm, hot dogs? why wouldn't i do that i've already can i tell I'm you something tra- tragic no tragic yes which is the costco by my house they are remodeling the food oh. court and it's closed until November. No. So I cannot get a hot dog nearby until it's finished. And I'm like devastated. But I have yeah. to go to the Costco Business Center, which is like somewhat close, but still. That's it's heartbreaking. devastating. Yeah. You know, I'll tell you something fun, some nice news. Yeah. They're putting a Costco in just down the road from me. Yes. Thoroughly so jealous. So close. Like, you know who's so excited about this is the, Joe. Joe will just three be minute like drive. every day. Yeah. yeah. And everyone's to mad. Joe. Everyone in the neighborhood's like, oh, we don't want the Costco. And I'm like, oh, sh- Why would you not want up. a Costco? Because there are a bunch of like- Your real estate oh, value goes up. Right? Oh, it's our- I hate the entire industry of real estate in this country and uh-huh. everywhere. But the And there's a lot of problems with it. But the idea that a Costco coming into your neighborhood would somehow devalue it yeah. is fun. You Classist. have it backwards, sir. You have ruined it. Madam. Yeah. Um, but we I should will... absolutely do that the next time I'm in L.A. Uh, yes. Or the next Not time. Not the one by my house, apparently, because the food court's closed. We'll, we'll, we'll go to the Target. We'll go to Husk Target. Oh, yeah. We still got to go And I got to go right. Nick, I got to go right. Segundus Nixon chat five times on the wall of that. Uh, hey, you know what? You know when you're going to be in L.A. is in about one a week, week or two. Why don't you tell everybody about where yeah. you're going to be for the rest of your book tour? Oh, so yeah. This will be the back half. Back the back half. half. I think you got a half. <laughs> I yeah, think so, you're in Portland, right? Yeah, I'll is be in Portland, Portland on the 20, 26 is Portland at, at Powell's uh, at 7 p.m. And then uh, Vroman's in Pasadena at 7 p.m. on the 29th of October. 
and then uh, Utah, Salt, Salt Lake, Lake City or... at the King's English uh, on November 1st. And I think that's at 7, but we'll see. And that's the end of that tour, finally. And then we'll go yeah. back to uh, normal. So next week, Hannah's also abandoning us yep. to go on her silly little vacation. My silly little um, hobby. Your silly little <laughs> hobby of your own book published by a major publisher <laughs> that's doing great. That's also fantastic and hilarious. You should also all go by. Um, Thank you. But uh, His opinion. Yeah, so we'll have it. We'll have more. Yes, it's true. I, my opinions are false. Um, we'll we'll have another guest episode next week, and then we'll be back for Halloween. It's going to be a good one, the guest it's episode. It's going to be a good one. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, but yeah, that's it. Thank you guys for tuning in. Again, please, please uh, stop by New York. Uh, stop by, uh, if you're at New York Comic Con, stop by our table. Unfortunately, K7. the things that I'm going to have ready, uh, I, don't, I don't have them ready right now to show off. Although maybe by the time this uh, airs, airs can we can actually up. plop. Yeah, we can plop and be like, hey, Alyssa. Show them the thing that I made. That's They're really here. cool. I'm very excited about wow. this. Wow. Look at how fantastic oh, yes. they turned out. Like I'm holding one. For some reason, yeah. it's massive. They look really good. Uh, do you have an, a, a new thing that you're just mostly going to be doing originals? Uh, a bunch of originals. Um, yeah. And then I, oh, yeah, I I'm have also this... doing originals, by the way. Yes. Oh, yeah. Sorry. And you're, you're, you're doing some Halloween originals, which are always some yeah. of my favorites. I have been starting, I'm starting this new thing where I, well, I always get freaked out when I think about how most of my artwork is in the cloud. And so I'm yeah. just going to go day by day through my daily comics back in 2016 through 2018 and redraw them all on actual paper. You're like, uh, you're doing the Taylor Swift thing where she went back and, I and recorded all of her records. You're like the Taylor Swift of New York City Comic Con. On that note, Covered I Covered in cow blood. I quit. <laughs> Love her. Oh my God, Bad Blood. That would totally bad work blood. for you now. You should just cow sing blood. that while we're there. Cow blood. <laughs> <laughs> and you got to wear some like, what is the, what do all those people wear in the music video? They're like the black leather. And we got to be just dumping cow blood. I'm just picturing her getting covered in blood like Carrie. And it's yeah. just cow blood pouring all over Taylor Swift <laughs> singing about the underground cow tunnels yes, where they're kissing yes, yes. lizard people. Lizard people. Lizard people. <laughs> do you think she would do the soundtrack to our lizard Clavi movie? I don't think she's real. Oh, she's CGI. She's not I real. think she's half. I don't know what she is. Uh, yeah. Anyway, thank you guys for listening. Again, please come see us in New York. Mm -hmm. uh, give us a shout out on the sponsor links by following them. And also subscribing, writing. We haven't gotten a lot of uh, review. We've gotten good reviews, but mm -hmm. we just haven't gotten like write-ups in a while. So if you guys can do some write-ups. The five yeah. stars are great. We're very highly rated on Spotify, by the way. Uh, yeah. Don't ruin that for us. Yeah, Keep going don't... with the five stars. Yeah. I know. I was looking at other people's and I was like, wait, what? we have a lot Why our are, fans are awesome are they're, they come out for us five stars i think there's one four yeah. star anyway thank you Bye. guys for listening uh we're gonna go do uh, comic-con stuff and until next time segundus nixon segundus nixon shat here in the cow blood three times yeah, shat in the cow blood he <laughs> shat cow blood five times <laughs> segundus nixon shat cow blood five times on the brooklyn bridge keep it clavy everybody keep <laughs> Yep. Clavier the cow lizard Navi. Oh, Navi. Oh. <laughs> the Clavi. Please, also, if you're an artist, draw us a Clavi and put it into Discord. Make it kiss another one. Make it kissing. Anyway, okay, bye. Bye.